So one month into the into the job, and uh, can you just give us a brief insight? How is it going? What are your priorities? So far, how has been the ride, and what is your what are your priorities? Can you please share that with us? Sure. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. So one month into the the job of chief exec officer, of course, not not one month into Seplat, um, being here for seven years. Um, and seen it through quite a number of uh, different iterations. So it's a company I understand very well. Um, it's a personnel, you know, the only person that's really left it has been the CEO. Um, he now goes on to the board, Austin Averro. Um, and so it's a company that I understand um, it, you know, very well. The strategy is very, very clearly set out and I was very much part of that, that strategy, um, which is a really a sort of build uh, transition transform strategy and let me say what I mean by that is build is build on what we've done for the last 10 years and we I think we've created a quite a formidable independent um, energy company uh, within Nigeria that's listed on London Nigerian Stock Exchange and London Stock Exchange really the only main uh, corporate listed Nigerian corporate listed on uh, the main board of the London Stock Exchange so it's really to build on what we did before and um, what we've got to, to, to this point and, and, and really start to, to ramp up our, our business um, in the wider energy sector, right? So we're obviously up, upstream oil and gas. Uh, we've created a very big midstream gas business that's, that's expanding quite rapidly. Um, and we'll start to look at other forms of gas value chain and looking at other sources of energy um, which is really what we're really here to do is deliver energy for the Nigerian population, um, which is very young. It's, it's growing very rapidly. Um, and it really be, will be on the map globally. It really is on the map today. But the next 30 years, we're going to see Nigeria, um, you know, becoming the third largest country in the world. And it's going to absolutely be on the map. And, um, and I'd say that the Nigerian population today is under... Under, uh, underpowered, if you want to call it that way, and in terms of energy supply into it, and it's only going to grow and, and get bigger and bigger. And so Seplat's role really is is to de de develop and deliver that energy for the a growing Nigerian population. So the build is what building on what we have today um, in in our in our assets, upstream assets in our midstream gas projects, and we've got some big ones coming up, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in this interview. Um, um, then it is to, to really deal with the transition, okay? So energy globally is changing quite dramatically. Um, you know, the, the, I think COVID-19 has been that very big catalyst for the world. Um, and it's really looking is, is where is the energy for the future going to be? Um, Obviously, with uh, uh, you know the world's focus on carbon uh, reduction um, and uh, energy emissions to come down quite dramatically to, to combat global warming, and, and Nigeria's got to play its part in that. Um, even though it is a very low CO two user today, I think Nigeria can um, continue to to become even lower carbon. Um, it can reduce flaring in the gas. It can displace diesel, um, generate a power, and it can look at renewable energy, um, which is the abundant, um, obviously, sun, a uh, lot of solar opportunities and the others coming up. So it's really looking at transition of how we can transition uh, uh, the country. And also, obviously, then in that, in that mix, uh, separate world transition as well. And then transform. So what does that transform mean? Well, for us, you know, there's a huge opportunity for us as a company um, to really capitalize on, on uh, growth within, the, within Nigeria. Um, you know, obviously for the last 50, 60 years, the sector has been dominated by the major oil companies. I think those major oil companies are starting to really look at their portfolio globally and, and really looking to see what the future is for big oil. 
And, and I think in that scenario, there'll be lots of opportunities for independent oil com energy companies like us um, to grab grab um, you know some assets, some good quality assets, and really start to work them. And will it be oil? Will it be gas? Will even the renewable energy. And, and I think that is the transformation that Seplet has um, in mind very much so. So I've really been brought on board to, to really drive the acceleration of that. Um, well, driven on by the board. The board has very big plans. And I think they're all realistic. I think we really can create, hopefully not alone, hopefully there'll be others, um, truly large independent energy indigenous companies. And, and, and that's the key thing is indigenous that um, Africans delivering energy for Africans. So fantastic. These are very good plans. Uh, so let me just speak a little about them. Can you please uh, give us an insight into some of the big projects you, you have planned? Yes, so um, obviously we, you know, we obviously operate a number of assets and we're going to grow them, we're going to drill oil wells, et cetera, and continue to deliver that growth. Um, but if I pick up specifically what we've done since, I guess, 2012, when not many people were investing in, in the midstream gas business in Nigeria, if you, if you look at it in the context, um, you know, Nigeria uh, flares a lot of gas, um, it exports a lot of gas. Um, it powers its grid, um, well, actually not even the grid, off-grid with diesel generators everywhere, and that diesel is imported. Okay, so you have you have massive gas reserves, uh, the biggest in Africa, um, and they're either being flared or exported, um, and the power is being delivered by imported diesel. So, so really, back in 2012, we saw a real opportunity, even though the market the economics weren't really there at the time. We saw gas as a big expansion for the domestic market. So all of our gas is domestic gas. We don't export any of it. Um, and we saw an opportunity to grow that gas business with our big expansion at the Oban gas plant, um, which we, we have now enough gas there, probably for around 2000 megawatts, 1500 to 2000 megawatts of, of, of power. And we're, and we're delivering that of about 300 to 350 million scuffs of gas um, every day um, in, in, into that market. Um, we have a gas plant at Sapley, which we're upgrading at the minute. Um, but one of our big projects really is the Anno gas development, which is, which is in the east of the country. Um, and that is delivering eastern gas uh, through a, an acquisition we made some years ago from, from Chevron. We bought a, a big gas asset, and that is really delivering a, a 300 million scuff a day gas plant. The, the federal government has built or about to uh, complete a very big pipeline taking the gas from the east into Oban, and that's where we're located with our Oban gas plant. So that, that um, development has always been part of the gas master plan set some 20 years ago um, within Nigeria, which is really to connect all the gas um, within Nigeria, with the sole purpose, really, the real drive was to, to capture that for the domestic market. And the, when the Anno gas plant comes on board, um, we'll really be going up to about 600 million scuff of gas um, into the domestic market. What does that really mean? That means somewhere between 2,500 to 3,000 megawatts of power. And, and that should reliably deliver... Um, probably around 2 million homes. So to so electricity, cleaner electricity for around 2 million homes within Nigeria. So it's quite, it's quite significant. It really will make Seplat very much the biggest domestic gas player in country. And we want to do more. We want to do more projects. We want to look more in the value chain within gas. And so all our gas plants have got LPG components. Um, and that's really is, 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 it has a lot of uses. Uh, LPG in the, in the car, the fuel for cars, uh, CNG um, opportunities, which is bottled gas for cooking, etc. So I think there's a really wide application for the domestic market, and that's what we're focused on. We're not 
we're not exporters of LNG. We are very much solely domestic gas suppliers in, in country. And that's, that's what the commitment that CEPLAT wants to do. Um, it is a massive market. I think there's lots more opportunities for us. We can, we can be a third party processor of gas. We have an opportunity to connect the West African grid with gas because we can connect into the West African gas pipeline. Um, so, so really we've seen a lot of development in the midstream um, and the gas value chain, um, as well as the upstream, because we must remember that despite where the world is going, which is sort of turning itself off from oil, it absolutely needs oil, right? And we need to deliver oil for the market, but we must deliver efficient oil, uh, low cost. Um, and then looking at renewable energy, um, it's too early for us at the minute, uh, but what we're looking at here is opportunities in the renewable sector. Um, most likely, I think, in Nigeria, it's going to be solar opportunities. And I think that can sit alongside quite nicely, alongside gas um, in, in efficient use of, of, of delivering of energy, cleaner energy um, within the country. So plenty of opportunity, big growth market for us, and we are actually committed to Nigeria. Great. So do you have any, speaking on the, your, your plans for the renewable energy space, do you have any plans to partner with some uh, local operators or essentially what is your strategy in that uh, aspect? Because all over the world, oil and gas companies are also looking to invest in the renewable energy space. And you mentioned you have this in mind. I just want to get a better understanding regarding how you want to really enter that sector. Uh, in case of operators, they also want to partner with you. Yeah, I mean, we, we yes, absolutely. I mean, look, we've been talking to quite a number of players. This is not a strategy we set today. We set it some years ago. And really, the board wanted to fully understand the opportunity set. Um, we had some um, discussions with quite a number of providers of solar power, and we're looking at many applications there. Um, we've looked at other um, renewable energy sources, but I think uh, solar is probably the, the sort of widest spread application, I think, within Nigeria. Um, we are looking at it. We don't have any projects at the minute, but we are very much um, you know, bringing stuff to the board. We're looking at how we do it, Okay, and I think to be realistic, you you captured very well there. It is it is going to be partnerships. I think that is a sensible way to do it for us uh, long term. So we'll be partnered with major oil companies that are looking at it um, in country, and there are quite a number of them that are. Um, and other other players in the market, power companies that want to you know, broaden into renewable energy. I think you know, one one thing for us is that. Um, the private sector can absolutely drive this. I think the public sector, the government can really help, right? And, and you know, if the government starts to drive incentives for renewable energy, um, you saw that in South Africa, the South African government really brought out a renewable program um, and really drew those opportunities within that market. And, and that can accelerate it. So we'll get there, we'll get there anyway as private sector, but alongside the government as partners with us, coming out with the regulation, coming out with the various incentives and everything else, and the real drive to do it, um, I think that will accelerate it quite dramatically. But the cost of, of solar power in itself is coming down quite dramatically. It's, it really is becoming very competitive against the traditional energy sources of, of oil, diesel, et cetera. Um, gas is, of course, very, very clean and, and cheap and, and can really sit alongside that. So. Um, I'm not about to announce a, you know, we're at a renewable investment at the minute, but, but just watch this space. We are looking at very carefully. We clearly want to scale it as a company, right? We, you know, we don't want to do a very small scale renewable and then leave it at that. Um, we really want renewables to be very much part of our energy mix that we're delivering to the Nigerian population. Thank you. You did mention your your investments are also geared towards uh, reducing carbon footprint. This is important. So can you speak to us a little about your environmental, social, and uh, corporate governance strategy? You have maintained a fine relationship with your host community. 
But going forward, can you elaborate more? Because in your in your last uh, uh, conference, you both the uh, former CEO as well as the chairman did mention extensively that you really want to up your game when it has to do with uh, ESG. So can you please uh, share some insight regarding the strategies you are adopting? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, okay. Um, sorry, just let me click that. Um, yeah, so so absolutely. Look, ESG is um, very much a buzzword at the minute. I mean, people weren't really talking about it a couple of years ago, but ESG is obviously everyone's sort of in, focused on the environmental. The social aspect, of, we've been doing social um you know, parts of our business since day one. You know, our, our community engagement model, our GMOUs, our global memorandum of understanding, you know, what we call our, our license, a freedom to act, our license to operate in the, in the communities. That's been going for 10 years. Um, it's been highly successful. Um, so the social aspect of what we try to do is, is very much clearly defined and everything else. The governance, um, again, you know, we've been listed on, stock markets now since 2014 even before that we had strong governance so the government aspects of what we're trying to do but a lot of people are focused on the environmental that's one part of it um and what we're doing at the minute is 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 it, it, it's so it's it's setting out a clear plan right so what 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 the market or the investors or the world or the stakeholders really want to see is what's your plan for de dealing with all the various parts of esg um, so we're working at the minute. We'll probably come out with a with some level of a roadmap in our Q3 results, which will be towards the end of October, um, which are really setting out the plans for the coming years of what we want to do, what targets we want to hold up to, um, and everything else, and delivering a, a cleaner, uh, more sustainable future for for, for the business. Um, if you want to talk on the environmental side of things. Um, you know, we, we've largely uh, covered a little bit on this call, right, which is, you know, looking at looking at our displacement of diesel, you know, again, from day one, um, where a lot of companies are looking at carbon reduction as a, as a longer term plan, you know, carbon zero by 2050 or whatever. What we're looking at is more near term, right? So what we're looking at is, is, is actively bringing on more gas into that market, which is then displacing off-grid diesel. The off-grid diesel is probably, we estimate, something like double the CO2 um, um, impact. So there's more, it's probably yeah, another 100% more of CO2 for each, each uh, you know, kind of megawatt of, of, of diesel generated power. So every, every megawatt we bring on gas-fired power is, is displacing half of that CO2. So already you're getting CO2 reductions. Uh, we're looking to flare out, so stopping flaring. And again, that CO2 reduction. So um, really what we're then going to be doing is setting a plan of, of how we're going to get measured about the environmental reductions, um, how we're going to get measured in our social programs. And again, they're very well documented, but it's about coming together and really explaining that. So Q3, watch this space, Q3 will come out with something, um, but it'll be a long-term plan over the coming years of how, how we address this. And it's essential it's essential that we are a, a very much a, 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 a sort of an energy company that satisfies all our stakeholders. It's not just about investors, it's about government, it's about uh, communities, it's about everyone um, as we try to deliver what's the most um, sustainable long-term energy for, for the country. That's great. So let's talk a little about uh, the, oil, the oil sector. Uh, due to the effects of uh, the coronavirus pandemic, companies like yours have been adversely affected, have been, in fact, that is all over the world. And uh, Nigeria as a country is also uh, facing similar challenges. There is the recent OPEC cuts Nigeria is uh, battling with. But there is some, uh, some proposals being uh, made by some indigenous oil and gas companies that uh, OPEC cuts should be done in such a way that uh, the indigenous company are given a little bit of a leeway to produce more or it's done in such a way that it doesn't hamper them so much i don't know what's your thoughts on that uh, argument 
some are saying that uh, perhaps the indigenous player should be given a little bit of preference regarding uh, uh, the supply costs. I don't know. Can you weigh in on that uh, argument? Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously what's happened this year, I think, I think genuine is a one in a hundred year event. Um, you know, we're all, we all were hit quite dramatically by COVID um, in, in, in March. Um, we were all, the world shut down. At the same time, we had the, um, we had the uh, price war on oil and, and we really went from, you know, don't forget it. We had, we I think we had sixty seven dollar oil in January, right? And we went to in certain cases uh, below ten dollar here, and even in Nigeria and in the U.S., you had negative oil prices, which you had never seen before. Um, and that was all in Q two this year. So it's so it's a dramatic hit for the for the for the world that's happened. Um, Nigeria is obviously heavily reliant on oil and. And the, and the drive, obviously, the future has got to be is bring, you know, bring less reliance on oil for government revenues, looking at other forms of, of revenues for the country. Um, OPEC, we, we believe, is uh, very much a 2020 thing. Um, we believe over time it will resolve itself. Um, and so the OPEC cuts um, are biting everyone. You know, they're, they're, they're starting to bite uh, now. We haven't really hit us too much so far, but... But it's something we're very mindful of now. In terms of uh, the demand from, you know, indigenous operators, you know, indigenous operators do need a chance. You know, they really need to be able to grow as a as a as a, as a sector in the market. Um, otherwise, you just have a dominance of major oil companies, and 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 then the government. And that in any any uh, oil mix is 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 not great. You know, really need to you need to allow the indigenous to develop. So if it goes long term, then absolutely. I think I think the indigenous companies do need some respite from, from government. Let's see how it goes in the next in this quarter and even to Q4 um, around it. And hopefully OPEC will quotas will then um, you know restabilize as a company. But you know I, you know I of course we would absolutely welcome from government any any way that they can help us um, as a sector. We don't sit with massive resources. We do rely heavily on external funding, um, equity, equity investment as well, um, and we need to have a chance. So absolutely, anything the government comes out with, we'd be very much supportive of. Um, but I think you know the indigenous sector can really grow within the country. Um, That's great. So uh, we are coming close to the end of the interview, and uh, can you just uh, speak generally your the next five years, your goals? Basically, in uh, just uh, one or two sentences, what do we expect five years from today? Well, um, five years from today, we're going to create a large, independent, indigenous energy company uh, delivering energy for the uh, wider um, Nigeria population and, and possibly outside Nigeria as well at, at, at the right time. Um, as, as Seplad itself, we are a um, as a company. We believe in, in in delivering for all stakeholders. We for investors, we pay dividends every year, and we continue to. We've even done that through the COVID scenario. We still paid our dividends. So, in return from everyone, um, a clear growth plan in the energy sector and all forms of energy, um, from from up, oil, upstream oil and gas to midstream gas, wider gas mix. To, to renewable energy as well. So um, I think we would absolutely see the opportunity to do this. We can, we can grow as a very big company. And again, we want more, right? We want more indigenous operators, not just, not just SEPLAT. We need to see the emergence of, of some big players out for the market. Um, to bring, and the key thing I want to say at the end, to bring foreign direct investment into Nigeria. Nigeria is a great investment horizon. You know, it's, it's up to us to make it more and more attractive for outside investment. So we can then deliver the growth in country um, and, and deliver that energy for the growing population of the future. 
Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your time and thank you for taking out the time to talk to us. We hope uh, in future when some of these projects project start to crystallize, we can also have opportunity to speak to you more about them. Thank you so much. That would be a great delight. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir.